people on that they were saying that they wanted uh, two minutes. So just do what the family asked. I'll be a little bit longer than two minutes. Um, I'm the daughter, so let me put that in there. So. <laughs> Today, I'm wearing a necklace that belonged to my dad's mom. This plastic necklace was probably only a few dollars, but it's priceless to me. I had not worn this necklace since my grandmother died when I was 14. The necklace sits around a stuffed tiger my grandmother owned, which was the mascot of her alma mater, Christmas Attics. Every time I walk past the stuffed animal and see this necklace, I'm reminded of my grandmother and the memories come flooding back. That's what we have left the dad, the memories. As the years go by, we will have to keep telling these stories to keep his memory alive. Another way to keep his memory alive is to remember the knowledge he imparted to us during his time among us. These lessons and tips are in no particular order of importance. I wrote them down as they came to me. Number one, be direct and honest. Dad was direct whether you wanted to hear it or not. Honesty was important to him. He said, you don't have to remember the truth, but you will always have to remember the lies you told. <laughs> Number two, give without expecting anything back. My dad lent money to people, he helped people, he supported people, and he always did it, never expecting anything back in return, because he said, if you are waiting for something to come back, then you didn't do it from the right place to begin with. <laughs> never stop learning. As my dad at Victory states, his mom nicknamed him the professor. He was always reading and always telling you about what he read. Even as an adult, he saved articles for me to read. He was one of my number one supporters in pursuing my education, even my doctoral degree, which I'm halfway done with. I told him I would be done after this, but he just laughed and grinned so much that I could see that gold tooth he had all the way in the back. <laughs> know your family history. A hobby I had with my dad was researching our family history. We would read articles, comb through census records, interview people, look through various documents and pictures to learn about the people who came before us. Even now, I have a list of people Dad assigned me to interview and documents to view. <laughs> Knowing who my ancestors are gave me a better sense of who I am. Don't leave your final affairs for others to figure out. For many people in our family, my dad helped and supported them until the end. As I got older, he would bring me along and teach me about final affairs. He said the worst is when people leave their earthly affairs in disarray and their family does not understand their final wishes. He said grief is hard enough without piling on top extra decision making. Each year, my dad and I would have conversations about what I should do when the time came. Even though today is hard, the planning was easy because all I had to do was execute his plan. Amen. Grow your own food. My dad grew collard greens, mustard greens, <laughs> beets, tomatoes, grapes, strawberry, onions, to name a few. He loved his garden. He told me you'll never have to guess what's in your food if you grow it yourself. Yeah, that's the truth. Take care of your family and your responsibilities. I know it was not easy for my dad. My dad told me he started working at 10 and he had not retired when he died. For a part of my childhood, he worked seven days a week. When people are out here dying black men and saying there aren't any good ones, I would like to enter into evidence my father, James Albert Stockton. Although my dad having a purple heart meant my college was mostly paid for, he had been saving money before he even met my mom for kids he might have in the future. That money helped pay for the expenses that weren't covered. Since I was on that five-year undergraduate college plan because I had changed my major three times, I had to take out a loan for the last year. When I married my husband, at the wedding, dad told me privately his gift. He was going to pay the loan in full so I would enter my marriage debt-free. Get involved. I interviewed my dad a few times for articles I had written. For an interview by Dr. King, I asked, what are you doing to make life better for the future and to carry on Dr. King's legacy? He responded, I speak up anytime I get a chance to speak up. I can't just sit back and watch things happen. I've got to get involved. In closing, because I already know Dad doesn't like the spotlight on him for too long, a couple of years ago, we were discussing his final affairs, and I looked at my hand and I shook my head, and I said, Dad, this is too much. I'm going to be distraught. I'm not going to be able to do this. My dad responded without me missing a beat, you can't do anything for me when I'm dead. You have to move forward. Then I said, but dad, I'm going to be really sad. I'm not going to just get over it. And he responded, you have to move forward, you will move forward. I can't tell you how or when, but I know the conveyor belt of life pulls us forward even when we don't want to go. When you leave here today, I hope these gems of wisdom my dad shared with me is something you can incorporate into your life. 
Besides my husband, my dad was the person I was closest with. But I'm a Stockton. When it's hard, Stockton's press on. Dad, for you, since you told me twice, I'm going to move forward. I'm going to press on. All right.